Well, ho, ho, ho. Thank you for joining me for this edition of We Need a Little Christmas. I'm Leanne Stair, and I hope to bring you a bit of Christmas cheer as I share with you some of the stories behind traditions, songs, and movies of the holiday season. Today, we're going to look at another favorite carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. This carol is generally attributed to John Wade, a British exile living in France after fleeing the Jacobean Rebellion. He earned a living by teaching music and copying plain chant and hymn manuscripts for private use. Around 1741, Wade put the Latin text of Adeste Fidelis to music. There are conflicting theories that Wade wrote the original text of Adeste Fidelis himself or took the words from an anonymous Latin hymn written by monks, possibly as early as the 13th century. The original four verses of the hymn were later extended to a total of eight. In 1853, the familiar English translation first appeared, attributed to Reverend Frederick Oakley. The meaning of O Come All Ye Faithful is under some controversy. While most would say it was a hymn about the birth of Jesus and a call of all Christians to celebrate his birthday, others have pointed out possible deeper meanings to the carol. One of the most common meanings attributed to the hymn by scholars is the song's direct reference to the Nicene Creed. The second stanza in particular. Now the Nicene Creed is a state of principles of belief shared by many Christian denominations. The belief in the Holy Trinity and the physical birth of Jesus are in the Nicene Creed. The second stanza of O Come All Ye Faithful clearly mirrors the creed. It says, true God of true God, light from light eternal, lo, he shuns not the virgin's womb, son of the father begotten, not created. Recently, there has been a competing theory about the meaning of the hymn put forth by Professor Bennett Zahn, head of the Department of Music at Durham University in England. He claims that the hymn can be interpreted as a call to arms for the faithful Jacobites to return with triumphant joy to England or Bethlehem and venerate the King of Angels, that is, English King Bonnie Prince Charlie. The Jacobite Rebellion was a failed attempt of Charles Edward Stuart, a.k.a. Bonnie Prince Charlie, to depose the sitting King of England, George II. The meaning of the Christmas Carol is clear. Come and behold him, born the King of Angels, really means come and behold him, born the King of the English, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Now there is some credence to this theory as John Wade, the hymn's author and composer, had fled to France from England during the doomed Jacobean Rebellion. You can decide for yourself which story to believe. Several artists have recorded this hymn. Mariah Carey recorded this carol on her second Christmas album, which also features her mother, Patricia Carey, who is a former opera singer. Another popular modern version is by Josh Groban, who recorded the song with the, Brooklyn, with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Now, as Adeste Fidelis, Bing Crosby released the only version of this song to chart in the U.S., reaching number 45 in 1960. Dee Snider of Twisted Sister claims that the group's hit, We're Not Gonna Take It, is based on the melody to this song. To prove his point, Twisted Sister did a version of O Come All Ye Faithful set to the music of We're Not Gonna Take It in their 2006 album, A Twisted Christmas. Another interesting tidbit of information about O Come All Ye Faithful, it is reported to be the favorite Christmas carol of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, and its original form of Adeste Fidelis was President Thomas Jefferson's favorite. So there you have it, the story behind O Come All Ye Faithful and then some, our Christmas present just for you. Until next time, Merry Christmas to you today and every day.